Hi, and welcome back to another podcast with Mr. Hagen. On this podcast, we're going to continue building that aggregate demand, aggregate supply model. And we're now, we, we've looked at the aggregate demand curve. We've looked at it in previous videos, what causes the aggregate demand curve, what causes us to move along the aggregate demand curve, and what causes us to shift the aggregate demand curve. We are now going to begin looking at the aggregate supply curve. And the aggregate supply curve, we really have to talk about uh, two aggregate supply curves. There's the aggregate supply curve in the long run, which is what I have drawn here, that's going to be perfectly vertical, or to use uh, economist language, it's going to be perfectly inelastic. We'll talk about that shortly. So in the long run, it's going to be vertical. And just understand when we say long run, that means that we're talking about uh, the classical economist. This is more of what a cla how a classical economist views the world. They focus on the long run. And then the short run aggregate supply curve is going to be an upward sloping curve, and that's going to be uh, more consistent with the Keynesian uh, position. That's going to be more consistent with the Keynesian position, and we'll talk about that short run uh, aggregate supply curve uh, a little bit later. So right now, uh, this video, we're going to look at the long run aggregate supply curve, the long run aggregate supply curve, which is perfectly vertical, is perfectly inelastic uh, is language that we would use. And and what does this mean to be perfectly vertical? What does this long run aggregate supply curve mean? Well, what it means is that changes in the price level, that is to say inflation, changes in the price level does not change the gross domestic product. Okay? Changes in the price level does not change the real gross domestic product. So if, re if, if prices double, the real gross domestic product does not change. Why? Because our ability to produce goods and services does not change. Our ability to use land, labor, capital, entrepreneurial skills to produce goods and services does not change. So the price levels, uh, that's just kind of keeping score, so to speak. Uh, and so if the prices of everything double in society, well, so what? We're all right back where we were before. It just it, it does doesn't matter. So what we're trying to do here is we're looking at a relationship between the price level and the real gross domestic product on the supply side. And on the supply side, there is no relationship, at least in the long run. Prices do not affect the real gross domestic product. So prices go up, real gross domestic product stays the same. Let's get some vocab out of the way here. The long run level of production, that would be this Y1 and Y2, uh, they get several names. Sometimes it's called your potential output. Before we called it your potential uh, gross domestic product. On some previous videos, we, we called it YP, potential GDP. It's also called uh, full employment. Now remember, full employment doesn't mean that everybody's working. Full employment just means that there's no cyclical unemployment. The cyclical unemployment is zero, so that means we are at the natural rate of unemployment and if we are at the natural rate of unemployment sometimes we call that the natural rate of output so all that language all these words are kind of used to describe the same concept of potential gross domestic product now let's talk a little bit more conceptually about what this means what I'm gonna say is essentially this long-run aggregate supply curve is essentially the production possibilities curve it's it's just like the production possibilities curve only now we're putting price on the vertical axis we're comparing our production to prices. And what we're saying is that our production does not change when prices change. So you can think of this as your kind of production possibilities frontier or production possibilities uh, curve. It's the limits of what we can produce. This is what we can produce with our land, labor, capital, entrepreneurial skills, and current technology. So what we would say is our long run aggregate supply, our ability to produce goods and services is a function of our real resources, how much land we have, how much labor we have, how much capital we have, how much entrepreneurial skills we have, how much technology that we have. It is not a function of 
of the price level. It is not a function of the price level. So this is a very classical economics idea. And in fact, sometimes this is called the classical dichotomy. The classical dichotomy uh, means that nominal variables, prices, do not affect real variables real gross domestic product okay and that that's what the curve showing us prices change real GDP stays the same classical dichotomy okay sometimes it's called monetary neutrality which is to say that money is neutral it doesn't change anything real so look how I said it here the real variables do not depend on the nominal variables the real variables do not depend on the nominal variables you can get a change in the nominal variable and the real variable stays the same so okay the way we always think about a curve is this we looked at the aggregate demand side and we had the uh, let, let me go back to it on the slides we looked at the aggregate demand side and we said there were changes in the prices that moved us along the aggregate demand okay we move along the aggregate demand curve and then the next thing we did was we looked at the determinants that shift the aggregate demand curve. These were the determinants to shift the aggregate demand curve. Now we're doing the same thing on the supply side. We have the things that move us along the aggregate supply curve, but of course, there aren't any things that move us along the aggregate supply curve. We don't move along it. I, I mean, I guess, I guess we do, but in this straight fashion. So the, the prices do not affect the real GDP. So Okay, we changed prices, moved along the aggregate demand curve, and then we shifted the aggregate demand curve. We changed prices for the long-run aggregate supply curve, which doesn't do anything. The next step, of course, is going to be shifting that long-run aggregate supply curve. And uh, we will talk about shifting that long-run aggregate supply curve on our next podcast. All right, this has been Mr. Hagen on another podcast. Thanks for joining me, and we'll see you on the next podcast.